Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct pleasure to welcome the class of 2015. Please remain standing for the posting of the colors, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Well, welcome to our 125th commencement exercise here at this wonderful, exceptional school that I am so honored to be 
a steward of for my short period of time. But most of all, I want to thank you, the parents, for entrusting it to us what we believe is your most precious resource, and that is your sons. It's something that we take very, very seriously. And I'm just going to take a couple of minutes to talk to them, if you don't mind. And then we'll begin. Gentlemen, I can't tell you how proud I am of the class of 2015. This has been an exceptional class, and you have performed above and beyond the call of duty in virtually everything that we've asked you to do. We have spent a week here talking to you about accomplishments. We've talked to you over and over again about honor and character and the things that this institution stands for. We've spent an inordinate amount of time during the course of your education trying to prepare you to be successful men and leaders in every aspect of society. Some of you will go on to military careers, but that's really probably only about 2%. Most of you will go on to successful business careers, legal careers, medical careers, hopefully great artists, and you will contribute to every aspect of the society that you come from. This last week, the time that we spent together has focused on your professional resume, your accomplishments as a man, and the building of the future. As you leave here, I want to talk to you about one particular thing, and that is that in life, we find that we have two resumes. We have our professional resume, and then we have our personal resume. And that has to do with virtues. What are your virtues? What is it that you give back to society? How have you contributed and made your family and your community a better place? When you come here, we talk to you about a 360 degree education. I've told your parents time and again, you are giving me your precious resource, that diamond. The more facets that we can cut into that beautiful stone, the greater the luster. We do not concentrate with you just on academics. We concentrate with you on spirituality, on love, on being a band of brothers, on teamwork, on character, on being rigorously honest in everything you do. That is not an unimportant thing. That is not an unimportant thing. You can be a man of great accomplishment, but you must give back to society as your obligation. You hear me talk to you about a noblesse oblige, to those which much is given, much is expected. You must go back and be a contributing positive force in the societies that you come from. You are prepared to do that. As you leave here, as you are launched into the world, we have prepared you to do that. We have given you a 360 degree education. But your obligation, you know, you take and you can accomplish a lot of things, but what do you give back? I'm going to introduce the chairman of the board a man of great accomplishment. How does he give back? He gives back to you every day by leading our board of trustees, by doing great things for young people. The same is true of Dr. Lofton and so many people you know. When you die, they might mention a few things about what you've accomplished in life. But what they'll focus on when they go to talk about you is what kind of father were you? What kind of boss were you? What kind of person? What, what did you do to enrich the lives of others? The Arabs have a saying that I absolutely adore. My life is enriched for you having lived in it. I can tell you boys that my life is enriched for having you lived in it. You have taught me. You have made me a better person. You teach me compassion. You teach me empathy. You teach me the things I need. Now go teach others the things that they need. I'm going to leave you with one thing. It's one of my favorite poems. I read it to you in chapel once. Nobody probably remembers. But I'm going to take and read it to you again. And it's called The Bridge Builder by Will Allen 
Drum Gogol, the bridge builder. An old man traveling along a highway came at the evening cold and gray to a chasm vast and deep and wide through which was flowing a sullen tide. The old man crossed in the twilight dim. The sullen stream held no fears for him. But he turned and went safe on the other side and buildeth a bridge to span the tide. Old man, cried a pilgrim from the side, you're wasting your time in building here. Your journey will end with the closing day. You never again will pass this way. You have crossed the chasm deep and wide. Why build your bridge at eventide? The builder replied, he lifted up his old gray head. Good friend in the path I have come, he said. There followeth me another day, a youth whose feet must pass this way. This stream, which has been as naught to me, to that fair-haired youth may pitfall be. He too must cross the twilight dim. Good friend, I build this bridge for him. Go forth and be bridge builders. Go forth and be men of character and honor. Go forth and be great. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor uh, to introduce the chairman of the board of Missouri Military Academy. Our Scribbling Coster is the co-head of the Basic Industries and Investment Banking Group of Citigroup Global Markets. Based in Chicago, Mr. Coster oversees the firm's investment banking in all the world's major metals, mining, and steel companies in North America, Europe, South Africa, Australia, and Asia. Uh, Mr. Coster works on numerous, or has worked on numerous transaction as an investment banker over his 17 years at the Citigroup, including the $7.3 billion takeover of BH Bilton, the $2.8 billion recapitalization and spinoff of Alcan, and the sale, $1.2 billion sale, of the gold fields in South Africa, and too many other things to really go through. Mr. Coster received his MBA from the Kellogg School at Northwestern University, and he is a, holds a bachelor's from the University of Virginia. He joins us today with his wonderful wife, Jenny, and his two sons, Bennett and Stribling. Ladies and gentlemen, Stribling Coster, chairman of the board. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Lofton, honored guests, members of the board of trustees, cadets, families, friends, President Mrs. Mrs. McGeorge, welcome. For more than 126 years, Missouri Military Academy has produced leaders in every aspect of our society, not only for the state of Missouri, but across the nation and around the world. We were founded in 1889 to educate boys, future leaders and boys from the state of Missouri and mid-Missouri in particular. Colonel A.J. Fleet, who was then the interim president of the University of Missouri, and Governor Henry Hardin, who was the 21st governor of the state of Missouri and an Audrain County resident, along with other townsfolk from Mexico, were donors who ponied up to create Missouri Military Academy. Governor Hardin led the way with a $1,500 donation in 1889. The academy burned down in 1896 and moved to Culver, Indiana. They promised to come back with the boys and the money, but they never did. In 1900, the town of Mexico thought the school was so important they hired Colonel A.K. Yancey, who was then president of Hardin Colleges of Mexico, to rebuild and run the academy. Today, Missouri Military Academy is a school on the move, a school and an organization which leads from the front, making a difference not only in America, but across our nation and around the world. We're proud to be a school that's 43% international, representing 18 countries and 23 states. We're proud to be a place which is increasingly where the world is turning to educate its future leaders. That leadership role wouldn't be possible without the dedication of our world-class staff and faculty, 
the ones who make it successful, along with you, family, friends, dedicated parents, and alumni. So please, let's give them all a well-deserved round of applause. As Tony mentioned, uh, and as we have for many years, Missouri Military Academy is enjoying another just fantastic year. We have the largest enrollment in the last five years and the highest re-enrollment in our history. We have made and are making great strides in the schoolhouse and improving everything in and around our campus. We have introduced new people, new programs. We continue to expand our global focus on our, through education with our International Boys School Coalition, which features our affiliation with such world-renowned schools as Eaton and Harrow Colleges, Gilman, Boys Latin, Raffles, the Haverford School, Macaulay, and St. Albans, to name a few. We've introduced collaborative teaching techniques, such as the Socratic method, relation, relational teaching, which aligns our commitment to 21st education and dramatically impacts our students' critical thinking. Once again, one of the very few schools of our type that is on track for 100% college acceptance. The class of 2015 itself has been awarded a record $5.7 million in scholarships. Se 71% of our cadets were accepted to highly selective colleges, and two of our cadets have been promoted, uh, sorry, have been appointed to the United States Military Academy at West Point. Terrific accomplishments. <laughs> Today, the board is focused on securing the next 126 years and in building the first new military school of the 21st century, a preparatory school with a military tradition. We will continue to invest in our people and programs, which will allow us to provide your sons with a world-class 360-degree education. The Board of Trustees itself has invested over $15 million over the last seven years in building infrastructure such as Bernard Hall, the Coster Media Center, and the brand new Stribling Hall. We're also committing an additional $5 million in the next few years to continue to top grade our people and our programs. In that vein, we're also intending to significantly upgrade our athletic complex, our athletic facilities by building a brand new athletics complex as well. So again, we thank you for your support. Thank you for bringing your sons here. And we thank you for everything you've done to help Missouri Military Academy succeed for not just the last 125 years, but hopefully and, and surely the next 125. Thank you very much for coming. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our campus and your graduation exercises. We're going to begin with Major Edsel Baker, middle school principal, as he presents the following middle school awards. The Stribling Cup for highest efficiency in the middle school this year goes to Cadet Chandler Bollinger, South Lake, Texas. Senator Christopher S. Bond Award for the Outstanding Middle School Underclassman, Cadet Rogelio Coria, Puebla, Mexico. Dr. Frank Yusefi will give out the following academic awards. The plaque for the highest scholarship in the freshman class goes to Gabriel Viejo, McAllen, Texas.
The plaque for the highest scholarship in the sophomore class goes to Gregory Mitchell Princeter, O'Fallon, Missouri. The plaque for the highest scholarship in the junior class is awarded to Nishan Canal, Mexico, Missouri. Yeah. Our chorus will now get together to sing the Battle Hymn of the Republic.
Presenting the principal awards for 2014-15 is President Mr. McGeorge. The Abbott Albright Award is awarded to the outstanding teacher for the academic year 2014-15 and is voted on by the National Honor Society and Delta Phi members and the M Club. And this year's recipient is Lieutenant Colonel Willis Kleinsorge. The Hymas Trophy for a faculty or staff member voted by fellow faculty members to have done the most for the boys during the year goes to Color Sergeant Mike Harding. <laughs> I like that modest grin. That's good. The Robert H. Weaver Memorial Award goes to those who best exemplify philanthropic support for MMA. This family has not only shown great generosity to MMA, but have inspired other parents and supporters to get involved and to work toward together to make a difference in the lives of our cadets. The Weaver Memorial Award recipient for 2015, Linda Angel and Robert Moore, parents of cadets Robert and William Moore. The Fritch plaque and stipend for the 11th grade cadet who exemplifies honor, good discipline, academic excellence, and service to the academy goes to Cadet Mohammed Babak, Kabul, Afghanistan. The Dorsey Anderson Class of 1895, Cup for the Cadet exerting a gentlemanly example, Cadet Rodrigo Padilla, San Salvador, El Salvador. Red Ireland, class of 1941, trophy for a fighting heart for the varsity athlete who never gives up. Cadet Stephen Prinster, O'Fallon, Missouri. The Mustang Scholar Foundation plaque is awarded to the cadet who works to promote multicultural understanding in the Corps of Cadets. This year's inaugural award goes to Cadet Edmund Baruta, Kigali, Rwanda. <laughs> Thank you. 
This year's Company M Club Award is awarded to Bravo Company. The company with the highest athletic standing, Echo Company. The company with the highest disciplinary standing, Charlie Company. The Company Spirit Award, Bravo Company. The company with the highest scholastic standing is Bravo Company. The company with the highest military standing, Charlie Company. That's the heavy one. The Honor Company for 2014-15 is Bravo Company. The outstanding performance by a company commander for 2014-15, Cadet Victor Marroquin, <laughs> Mexico City, Mexico.
Victor, are you tired yet? <laughs> the Don Hooten Class of 1999 Fellowship Cup is voted by the senior class to be the most valuable to the institution. This year, the recipient, Cadet Simon Barrera, Laredo, Texas. The Charles I. Wall Cup is the second highest leadership award given to an MMA cadet and is awarded to a cadet who best typifies the ideals of character, leadership, scholarship, and service upon which the academy was founded. This cup is named in honor of Stony Wall, class of 1922. This year the cup is awarded to cadet Simon Barrera, Laredo, Texas. Our next award is the Legion of Honor, which is the highest award which can, a cadet can receive. It's awarded to the outstanding cadet or cadets who demonstrate industry, integrity, leadership, and above all, loyalty to MMA. We have one recipient this year. This year, cadet Desherian Nelson, Memphis, Tennessee. Cadet Nelson, if you'd stand right here for a moment. Wait, stand right here, please. If we could ask Cadet Desherian Nelson's mother to also come to the stage. No crying. Okay. Dr. Yousefi will present the James C. Olson Award for the highest scholarship in the class of 2015 and deem him the class of 2015 valedictorian, Jose Refugio Garcia. Good morning, cadets, friends, family, faculty and staff, and especially the graduating class of 2015. Before I begin, I want to thank Google and Wikipedia for getting me here today. <laughs> I remember the first day I came on campus as a freshman. I was handed the cadet handbook and told to read it cover to cover. I was being yelled by officers. No matter how hard I tried, it seemed I was always doing something wrong. I was hopeless and confused. But if there was one thing I knew for sure, it was that the thought of me being valedictorian did not cross my mind. I really did not want to be here freshman year. I told my platoon sergeant and dear friend of mine, Francisco Morales, that I wasn't coming back sophomore year. He laughed and said to me jokingly, bro, your dad probably already paid all four years in advance. <laughs> I shrugged and pretended to ignore him, 
but deep down I knew I was going to graduate from MMA. It goes without saying that I've learned a couple of life lessons here at MMA. Lesson number one, being on time is late, being early is on time. Countless times I have been late to mess or accountability formations simply because I was not there a couple minutes before the official time. So to all you seniors going to the real world, get there a couple minutes early, like dinner with your mom or bingo with grandma. Lesson number two, do what you're supposed to do and people won't have a reason to yell at you. My first year, I always saw the same kids over and over again in ED, and it was because they kept on misbehaving over and over again. So if you behave, you're not gonna be in ED. So always just do as you're told and you'll be out of trouble. The third and final lesson, always, always try your best. Never sell yourself short. If you try your best, you will eventually find a field where you will be successful. For example, I hated math. I was so bad at it. I got to the point where I just threw my pencil and quit. I didn't want to try anymore. But then I got an F on a midterm and I realized I needed a change in strategy. I started to try. Sure, it involved extra study hours, extra work hours, but in the end, I tried my best, and now math is one of the subjects I'm most skilled at. No one is perfect. Everyone has flaws and weaknesses. MMA helped me, by trial and error, to turn my weaknesses into strengths. I'm more confident in saying that MMA has done the same to all of its cadets. Before I finish, I would like to mention some of the people who made my time here at MMA a time that, will not, that I will not easily forget. First, I would like to make mention of the people that I like to call the survivors. These are the senior cadets that have been here with me for four years. These cadets are Barrera, Borgsmiller, Vaughn, Anderson, Zhang H, Harris, Paz F, Lee Q, Yot, Pratt, and Nelson DC. Secondly, I want to mention my table. All year long, I sat with Roger, Biruta, Marroquin, Gomez, Paz, Jimenez, Flores, and Vilches. These are my closest friends that always made fun of me for studying too much, but I'm sure they're glad I'm mentioning them now. <laughs> Lastly, I want to mention the faculty members that were basically re replacing my mother all year long. Miss Rhonda Blau, whose smile always cheered me up on my worst day. Miss Shara Martin, who I could always gossip with after school. And lastly, Mrs. Cheryl Morris, who I should probably call Dr. Morris because she was basically my therapist listening to all my issues whenever I was stressed out. To conclude my speech, I want to address the seniors. Seniors, the last thing I want to say to you guys, especially when I'm looking at you guys from up here, is that I see the next generation. You know, there's a lot of brave people in the world right now, but they're brave for the wrong reasons. I want to encourage you guys to be brave for the right reasons. I want you guys to step up and hold positions of influence and power because there are people here right now that I'm talking to that are going to be in high positions of influence one day and I just pray that you learn to love the truth and that you swallow it no matter how hard it is and that you will, that no matter how hard it is, we need you to step up and have the courage to take down things that are more powerful than you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the distinct honor of introducing our guest speaker today. And we are honored here today to have the Chancellor of the University of Missouri, R. Bowen Lofton. He became Chancellor of the University February 1st, 2014. He is Mizzou's 22nd Chief Executive Officer. He is also a Professor of Physics at the University of Missouri. Lofton was president of Texas A&M University from 2010 through 2014. 
following eight months as the interim president and four years as the university vice president, assigned as the chief executive officer for Texas A&M Galveston Branch Campus, where he is also a professor of maritime systems and engineering. Before joining Texas A&M, Dr. Lofton served at Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia as a professor of electrical and computer engineering and a professor of computer science. He was also Old Dominion's director of simulation programs and had the responsibility for the institution's, institution's graduate programs in modeling and simulation. He served as the executive director of the Virginia Modeling Analysis and Simulation Center Earlier in his career, he was professor and chair of the Department of Computer Sciences and director of the NASA Virtual Environments Research Institute at the University of Houston. Dr. Lofton earned his bachelor's degree from Texas A&M. He earned his master's degree in physics from that same university and also his doctorate from Rice University. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to in introduce the Chancellor of the University of Missouri, Dr. Lofton. Good morning. I love it. When I was asked to consider coming here today, uh, I made sure it was after the graduation I did last weekend. Uh, we had almost 6,000 uh, seniors last week to graduate at the University of Missouri. Uh, I shook well over 6,000 hands. I've recovered enough to shake your hands today, gentlemen. As I began thinking about what I wanted to do, a lot of memories came to me. As the president mentioned in recent me, I served for a number of years as president of Texas A&M University, and before that, as the CEO of their Galveston branch campus. Uh, those 10 years of service were connected institutions that have a lot in common with the Missouri Military Academy. I also am a graduate of Texas A&M, again, a place which has deep military roots. So one reason I'm here today is because it feels good. It's comfortable to be here. If you come to my office, I have many things. It, it's, as President Major will tell you, we get a lot of stuff given to us. We get a lot of trinkets given to us all the time. I have one very prized possession that hangs behind my desk. It's a saber, a saber given to me by the Corps Cadets at Texas A&M as I departed the presidency there in 2014. Uh, this was a symbol of my admiration and respect for the Corps Cadets, which at that time was 2,500 strong. Uh, those individuals in the Corps meant so much to me, as I'm sure you mean so much to President McGeorge and the faculty here at MMA. I looked at this academy's history and particularly was drawn to the mission statement of the Missouri Military Academy, which says it empowers young men to unlock their potential through a program of academic excellence, character, social development and leadership training with, within a structured environment. And I've chosen today to focus on just one small piece of that, and that piece is leadership. I want to tell you a couple of stories that have influenced me dramatically in my role as a leader. And I think you'll have your own stories as you grow up into your careers, and I hope you treasure them and pass them along as well. I'll warn you up front that one of these stories is fairly traumatic, but that's what leadership may be about. In June of 2008, I stood on a Friday afternoon at a dock in Galveston, Texas, and watched a sailboat named the Cynthia Woods depart on a regatta down to Mexico. This is a multi-day sailing trip. Our crew were two faculty members and four students. The captain was a retired Coast Guard commander. They took off in fairly good weather, but over the evening the weather deteriorated. 
I got a phone call Saturday morning at 6.05 a.m. informing me they had failed to check in as required at 6 a.m. by radio telephone. I immediately went, went down to my, my office area, began to call Coast Guard support to see if we could find out if there was a mechanical electrical problem or if other things might have happened. The Coast Guard dispatched a plane and ultimately found the hull of the New Woods floating upside down in the Gulf of Mexico. The search continued and about 11 a.m., 11 p.m. rather, Sunday night, we found five survivors. I say five survivors. Recall six left Galveston that day. They were pulled into a Coast Guard helicopter, brought to a hospital in Galveston where I met them, and learned that the one missing individual was a faculty member named Roger Stone. I talked to the crew. At the time the boat encountered a difficult situation, we had three people above deck, including the, the captain and two students, two below deck, three below deck sleeping, the other faculty member, Roger Stone, and two students. What happened was the keel fell off the boat. Now, if you're a sailor, you know what that means. When the keel falls off under sail, the boat's going to flip over within a second or two, be upside down. And so you can imagine you're sleeping, and all of a sudden, your boat's upside down, total darkness, and water is coming in rapidly. Well, two students told me that Mr. Stone had the presence of mind to grab the only available life jacket he could find, hand it to one of them, and push them both out into the sea. He did not follow them. I dispatched a team of divers to investigate the hull, and Mr. Stone's body was found inside. So, being the leader, I got in my car and drove to his home, where I knew his wife and children, family and friends were gathered, waiting for word. When I walked in the front door of that home and Linda Stone saw me, she knew why I was there. Now, in your lives, you're 17, 18 years old, you probably haven't been hated yet. But as the leader of the institution that employed Mr. Stone and sent him on this trip, his wife saw me as the institution, and she directed all of her hate for the loss of her husband to me. Uh, that was a powerful and profound experience, gentlemen. She threw me out of her house immediately, and I was standing on the front lawn talking to her neighbors and friends when her 14-year-old son came outside. He asked me the following question. Tell me how my dad died. So I could tell him his father died saving two students. He then said to me the following words. He said, Dr. Lofton, forgive my mother. Forgive my mother. She's not herself. From a 14-year-old. Think about that. So I tell you this, future leaders. Nothing you'll ever do prepares you for that, but expect as a leader you will have to do things that are difficult and will cause people not to like you anymore. See, humans like to be loved. We like to be loved. And you've been loved by your parents, your family, your friends, the faculty and staff here at MMA. They, they love you. But someday as a leader, people won't love you anymore. And that's a hard thing. It's a hard thing at my age. It's a very hard thing at your age. But I ask you to be prepared for that time. You see, you've been preparing for it already. 
By being a student here, you have been experiencing leadership. And talk to the officers of this Corps of Cadets. You know, they'll tell you their stories about difficult things to do. Right, Commander? Difficult things to do some days. It's hard to discipline your friends. It's hard to tell people to do things they don't want to do. But a leader does that and has to do that. My second story is somewhat different. I worked for a great deal of my professional research career with NASA, developing simulations that were used to train astronauts and the flight support personnel there. While I was working at the NASA Johnson Space Center many years ago, I was given a very, very critical task to lead a team of individuals to develop a particular software system in a short period of time with very, very large constraints. Now, I was excited. It was the first such assignment I'd been given. I was extraordinarily pleased to be trusted with a very critical task by the U.S. government and given this team to lead to make it all happen. But we had a serious job to do. We had very little time to do it in. And I spent a great deal of effort, sleepless nights, designing the plan to get this job done. I gathered my team together and told them, here's the plan. Here's a day-to-day -day plan for everything we're going to do. And it all fitted within the time frame given to us by the project leaders. So we started off. I met every morning at 0800 with my team to talk about the day ahead and review the progress made the previous day. Three days into the project, we were behind. I wasn't happy. I began telling them, work harder, more hours, what's wrong? What I didn't know was that the person who assigned me this task, my mentor, who's an extraordinary person who was a key individual that got us to the moon back in the 1960s, was hanging around outside the doorway of the room I was meeting with my team in every morning, overhearing what I was saying. By the second week, we were way behind schedule, and I was getting pretty loud. I was in the face of those team members telling them, what's wrong with you? Can't you work harder? So about day eight or nine, my mentor Bob called me into his office after one of these meetings, closed the door and sat me down and said, Bowen, I've got a piece of advice for you. Now listen carefully, guys. He said to me the following words, Bowen, you need them, he meant the team, more than they need you. I'll say it again. He told me the team was more needed by me, the leader, than they needed leader. And I was hurt. I was hurt by that. He was telling me I'd failed. But I thought it over. In the next meeting we had, I said, folks, I'm tired of talking. Talk to me. Tell me why. Tell me why we're not making this work. See, that was the first time I'd ever asked that question. And they were stunned. I've been yelling at him for days. And all of a sudden now I was ready to listen. It took him a few minutes to believe I was serious and to begin to tell me why we weren't on schedule, why we weren't getting the job done. And that was a turning point for me and certainly for our project. And I really understood for the first time viscerally that I was the least important person there. You see, I couldn't do the work. There was too much and too many skills I didn't have. There was no way I could have done that job by myself no matter how much time I was given. I needed them desperately to do the job, but I wasn't acting like that. So my last piece of advice for you is very simple. As a leader, never forget you're the least important person. Those you lead are the ones who are important. 
If you don't forget that advice, you will be extraordinarily successful in your careers going forward. So I wish you the very best in your future endeavors. I wish more of you were coming to Mizzou, by the way, but I'll, we'll work on that. But I know you're going to be successful at your next stage of the life and universities and academies going forward. And once you leave there, you're going to be incredibly successful in whatever, whatever profession you intend to place your future. So congratulations to each of you and best wishes for a very, very bright future.
Will the class of 2015 please rise? President McGeorge, I have the honor to present the graduating class of 2015. Since they have completed satisfactorily the course of studies as prescribed by Missouri Military Academy, accredited by the Independent Schools Association of the Central States, I recommend that they be awarded their diplomas. Class, please be seated. The class of 2015 has earned over $5 million in scholarships this year. Please come forward to receive your diploma as I call your name. Isaiah Dion Atkins, Leavenworth, Kansas, Santa Rosa College, California. Enrique Alarcón Lozano, Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico, Universidad Iberoamericana. Canal Altantuga, Altumbatar, Mongolia, the University of Arizona. <laughs> Kane Jacob Anderson, Bismarck, North Dakota, Texas A&M University. Claudio Jacob Arias Castellanos, Jr., Colima, Colima, Mexico. McEwen University, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Simon Alexis Barrera, Laredo, Texas. St. Mary's University. Telemann Bat Uzi, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, University of Utah. Timujan Bata, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, New England Institute of Technology. Timulan. Bapayar, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, University of California, San Diego. Monk, Bald, Batmonk. Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, University of California, Irvine.
Edmund N. Baruta. Kigali, Rwanda, Norwich University. Nolan Ross Borgsmiller, Chesterfield, Missouri, Arizona State University. Maxwell Allen Broughton, Wentzville, Missouri, West Point Preparatory. Vincent Paul Burke, Jr., Smithton, Illinois, McKendree University. Gershurin <laughs> Bayambatsarin, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, the University of Arizona. Donald Keith Kennard, Fort Worth, Texas, St. Louis Community College. Zaikun Dung, Haiku City, Henan, China, Rutgers University. <laughs> Rodrigo Elizondo Carranza, San Pedro Garza Garcia, Nuevo Leon, Mexico, St. Edward's University. Monksuld Nkpayar, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, Blue Mountains International Hotel Management, Australia. <laughs> Mason Lee Evans, Carlisle, Iowa, Missouri Western State University. Andrew James Field, Alexandria, Virginia, Hampton, Sydney College.
Juan Ramon Flores Tenorio. Tacala, Mexico. Universidad de las Americas, Puebla. Jose Refugio Garcia, Mission, Texas, University of Texas. Right <laughs> Octavio Gomez Landero Guerrera, Boca del Rio, Veracruz, Mexico, University of Houston. Victor Manuel Gomez Ramirez, Pachuca, Hidalgo, Mexico, University of Tampa. Roger Anthony Gonzalez, Mission, Texas, Columbia College, Chicago, Illinois. Patricio Kio Lopez Claras, Mexico, District of Federal, Mexico, Superior de Gastronoma, Mexico. <laughs> Brandon Allen Guterman, Jenks, Oklahoma, Tulsa Community College. Our next senior cadet, Hugh Wesley Harris, is participating in the district track meet today. We wanted to recognize him. He's from Wichita Falls, Texas, and will be attending Iowa Wesleyan University. Yeah. Yeah. Gavin Zachary Hendy, Wentzville, Missouri, University of Missouri, St. Louis. Armando Jimenez Rendon, Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, Universidad Panamericana. <laughs> Hamilton Fitzgerald Johnston, Lakeville, Minnesota, Hennepin Tech. Kotaro Kasamatsu, Minatuku, Japan, Norwich University.
Chi Li, Dongguan, China, Florida Institute of Technology. <laughs> Chao Liang. Shanghai, China, Florida Institute of Technology. Wade Kelly Lucanati, Loman, Missouri, Westminster College. Victor Marroquin Gonzalez, Mexico City, Vestira Federal, Mexico, University of Tampa. <laughs> Alexandre Amadeo McDonald, San Diego, California, Carroll College, Montana. Dustin Daniel McGuire, St. Louis, Missouri, St. Louis Community College. Junior William Miller, Martin, Tennessee, Dyersburg State. Cole Austin Mueller, Wildwood, Missouri, United States Military Academy, West Point. Ank Bayar, Naran Satral, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, San Francisco State, California. Sherian Charles Nelson, Memphis, Tennessee, Marion Military Institute.
AJ Karan Desai Namali, Andhra Pradesh, India, University of Missouri, Columbia. Miles O'Keefe, Fenimore, Wisconsin, Roosevelt University. <laughs> Alex O. Ati, Lagos, Nigeria. University of Illinois, Urbana, Champaign. <laughs> Rodrigo Antonio Padilla Gonzalez, San Salvador, San Salvador, El Salvador, Missouri Valley College. Joshua Morgan Paley, Seattle, Washington, Northern Arizona University. Felix Ulysses Paz Valdez, Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, Texas A&M International University. Efrain Perez Felix, Silpancinco yeah. Guerrero, Mexico, Iberia Americana Universidad. <laughs> Maximiliano Perez Gonzalez. Chapancinco, Guerrero, Mexico, Universidad de Jalapa. <laughs> Alex Joseph Pratt. Whitestown, Indiana, Indiana State University. <laughs> Stephen Allen Prinster, O'Fallon, Missouri, Kansas State University. Brandon Allen Ricci, Concord Township, Ohio, Cleveland State University.
Jonathan Quinn Richardson, Cohasset, Minnesota, St. Cloud State University. Derek James Ryan, St. Louis, Missouri, Missouri Western State University. Ariandev <laughs> Sandui, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. University of California, San Diego. Adam Brown Smiths, Chesterfield, Missouri, Norwich University. Bugnute Temuchin, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, De Anza College. Yeah. Reed Anthony Vaughn, Honolulu, Hawaii. DePaul University, Chicago, Illinois. Rodrigo Filchez Amor, Mexico Distrito Federal, Mexico Universidad Iberoamericana. Guang Ying Wei. Chihuang, Taipei, China, Penn State University. Ji <laughs> Hao Wu. Guangzhou, China, Florida Institute of Technology. Jorge Isaac Zamorano Santander, Lagos de Moreno, Alisco, Mexico, Tecnological de Monterrey. Huang Song, Senjin, Guangdong, China, 
Boston University. Hao Ming Remy Song, Senjin Guangdong, China, Santa Rosa College. Dugladur Zobo, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, California State University, Chico. Please rise as Major Shoemaker leads us. Gentlemen, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and the State of Missouri, I hereby declare you graduates of the Missouri Military Academy as of May 23rd in the year of our Lord 2015 and as such entitled to the rights and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Congratulations gentlemen, you're graduates of Missouri Military Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as Major Shoemaker leads us in the singing of old MMA, and please remain after the song as the colors are retired. No school shall dim thy fame, no sun shall give thee shame. No son forget thy name, old MMA. Our hearts are bound to thee in love and loyalty. Steadfast thy son shall be for
Major Baker will pronounce the benediction. Class of 2015, please receive this benediction. Do not let anyone think less of you because you are young. Rather, be an example to all in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, and in your perseverance. Be who you are, and may you be blessed in all that you are. Cadets, please remain standing. The guests may be seated until the cadets have left the building. And right after, please join us on the front campus for the final formation. <laughs> 